Here's a large, quite heavy box from Amazon. Came in the mail. Let's see what we got here. It's big, whatever it is. Let's see what we got. Oh, it's heavy. Five quart cast iron Dutch oven. Wow. Beautiful. Look at that. Cast iron Dutch oven. Well, I know who this is only because now it all makes sense. Oh, there's something else in here. I know who this is from because of one thing only. <laughs> and now it all makes sense. He said, when you get it, throw it in the fire. I did not understand what that meant. I had no idea what that meant. When you get it, throw it in the fire right away. What's this? A meat rack. This is a pre-seasoned meat rack. Oh, it looks like it goes inside your, your frying pan and allows the juices to drip out. Interesting. I'm going to have to check that out. I've never seen a cast iron meat rack. Cool. Well, this is from Brian. My friend Brian from YouTube. And you had me going. He sent me an email and said, when you get it, throw it right in the fire. And I had no idea. What would you want to throw right in the fire? That just did not make sense at all to me. And uh, here it is. Well, thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. I was absolutely, completely confused and surprised, <laughs> but it's going to be useful. I'll be cooking with this pretty soon. Can't wait. Morning, this is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. It's dark and cold. It's really cold. I think it's like around 40-something today. It rained, so um, my construction is on hold, sadly. My wood pile is wet, and I had been hoping to cut some wood and make some paneling today and some furring strips for inside the tiny house on wheels. But everything is sopping wet right now out here, unfortunately. So that ends that idea. Um, I'm going to show you what I did. I did not record this the other day. I have a wet looking countertop which is not wet it's actually dry I um, didn't manage to show you that but it sure is amazing looking now that's the third coat and you can see that after cleaning the glue up it turned out pretty well it was a job it was a serious job but it turned out it was worthwhile in the end so um, I still have to do a few more coats now, oddly, I don't know what happened. See, here's something that's that's very annoying. I cannot explain it, but there's a crinkling effect. I, I, I don't know what happened here. Um, can you see it in the camera or no? I can't tell until I get to the computer later if it's showing up or not. It's got a crinkled effect, almost as like what happened with my trailer frame when I painted the one type of paint on top of another and the uh, I, I can't quite explain it and I can't quite see it on the I don't know if the camera shows it but I guess we'll see together later but it's got this wrinkled look and I don't know why because I didn't do anything different I sanded actually John sanded for me on Saturday and then I put on a coat of polyurethane and um, these boards are fine right here everything's dry nice and neat and these ones are crinkled I don't know what happened different here I can't see the back wall no that's all smooth so only these ones here it's very weird I don't know what happened like a pruned look and this counter air space here looks good this is all good 
it's very weird I cannot imagine why that would be but look at the uh, everything turned out nice in the end it turned out very well now one thing that disturbs me is the nail holes are sinking in and I'm not sure if the the nails have to be sealed or something because it looks to me like the nails yeah the polyurethane is not sticking to the nails so I've got these deep pits forming and that bothers me so I'm gonna have to figure out how to seal them each of them maybe even a dab of glue see that you can see that clearly right there that nail is not the polyurethane is not sticking to it so I might just have to put a dab of glue on top of each nail the clear glue will then um, hopefully the polyurethane will hopefully stick to the glue which will be on top of the nail and that's my hope anyway otherwise I'm in trouble here because that will allow water to seep down inside and another thing I wanted to do today was put the trim on here and start I'm gonna have a lip on here just a little bit of a lip to prevent water from running down inside here which would cause the polyurethane to lift so I was hoping I know it's not normal to have a lip on your the edge of your counter a raised lip but in this case of the polyurethane, it'll be beneficial because if anything runs down, you do not want it. Well, you don't want that to happen. And if that's, if I have a polyurethane lip on there, nothing could get through. Ever. Nothing. So that's a plan, but I guess that's delayed as well due to the uh, wet wood out there. So, well, I'm going to get the wood stove going in here. I have a guest coming over and... Um, I know some people might be disturbed with me, but it is part of living off the grid, part of self-sufficiency is I'm going to have to get a deer this year and preserve it. And so I'm going to fire up the wood stove so it's warm in here when he arrives. And uh, we have to organize everything for hunting season out here. I forgot to show a couple things from Saturday's work. There was a lot of activity going on and my friend from church was over and built me a kindling wood box out of pallets and I just got to put a board in here and here to fill that in so the wood doesn't fall out and I'm hooked up oh, look at my little chipmunk friends they're not afraid of me hi little guy anyway uh, then we've got some pallets laid out here I'm going to flip him over We've got some pallets here for, for wood, and actually that one, I'm going to put that one over here next to this one, and put another one next to that one, and all my wood will be off the ground, all my firewood, and uh, I just heard something moving out there, don't know what. So that was one of the things we got done, I wanted to show you, actually my friend, my anonymous friend from church did that. And I want to show you something else, which is really good, if I can get past the ravenous chickens. Alright, let me feed the birds, otherwise they're going to mob me and eat me for dinner. Now that the birds are pacified, I can safely get past them without being eaten alive. The ravenous creatures old dinosaurs so we've got the new chicken coop which the birds don't use yet but which is now rainproofed with the extra tar paper that I had so now it's getting there that's gonna be an egg laying battery um, free range egg laying battery means they can go free willingly into there and here he put this up on stilts off the ground and made a nice little walk up ladder for them that was uh, very good very nice of him so now this is convenient and oh he made a door look at that I didn't even see that look at that he made a door still needs a board on the inside for that for safety but the uh, the uh, boxes aren't finished yet inside but there's going to be a walk-in place and then egg batteries in the back end I'll probably put some insulation in there later for them. 
and in a self-cleaning area here this was a rabbit hutch that a neighbor had given me and it's going to be a nice uh, chicken home I'm gonna put some flap some material down over the sides so that weather and rain can't get in around the edges and sides and uh, that'll be nice whoops I don't know what that was meant to be for but oh I've got my uh, <clears throat> my neighbor or my friend here uh, Kent Wood hi I'm just talking about uh, progress that's been done around here oops I lost you uh, zoom in on his face there he is the trucker you ready we're going all right we're going for a ride today as I mentioned earlier we're going to get our his he bought a deer stand two years ago and it's out at the last real house that I ever lived in and uh, we're gonna go over and get that and we're gonna set it up here in the forest for this year's hunting I know some people are not happy about that but I have to eat and on the path to self-sufficiency it means eating meat um, and getting my own protein so we're gonna set that up and then we're gonna get our hunting licenses uh, later on and uh, anyway there's a source of meat I just got to get myself to uh, be able to eat it it's not easy hand raised but that is again part of life so we're gonna go get that tree stand and see you guys later Guys, I suggest you guys all get them. You got some new boots. You're proud of your new boots. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Tell us about them. Oh, they're great. <laughs> they're great. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I suggest you should get one of these. Since you're working in the field here most of the time. Right. Humid, wet, and dirt, and right. dust, and bugs, and ticks. Uh -huh. I think this pretty much will protect your feet. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Right out of Texas, you said, huh? Right out of Texas. The real deal. Cavaliers. This is a cross between uh, this is a cross between Australian Crocodile Dundee and Texan Cowboy and I don't know what else, but this is Kent went on to run. Now this is Troy from the Do It Yourself World in the Off Grid Project, sitting here at the counter of my tiny house on wheels, cooking my second meal here in my new house already before the house is even actually finished being built properly but the countertop is nice to have and this is the Canadian Thanksgiving which um, I am only aware of actually because a person donated me money for the specific purpose of having a very nice Thanksgiving meal which I am doing and with my friend uh, Kent went on the run. He's outside right now. He'll be back in a minute. And I'm using my new Dutch oven here. And it's going to be, the meal is going to be cooked on the wood stove. Which is right now firing it up and getting ready to go. It's heating up for me as I prepare the food here. So we're going to have a really good time. And, uh, it's like a Pop some woo, that's an inferno in there. Nice, very good. So we'll uh, get this food going here. We got some chicken, got some potatoes, got some uh, onions, some garlic, um, some herbs and spices, which I'll pull out of the garden in a little bit here. And uh, the other reason for the celebration, which is absolutely perfect timing that we're having this meal here together and that my friend is with me is that I just hit 40,000 subscribers on YouTube and I want to thank you all everybody for being there with me to bring me to where I am today every single one of you I value although recently I have to admit I have been extremely busy and I haven't really been on the comments enough um, some people are a little bit upset I'm really sorry I've been putting in long hours on the tiny house construction. Um, please do forgive me for not answering all the comments. And um, you know, it's I, I, I try, I really try. But when the tiny house is built, then I'll be able to relax a little bit and get back to normal schedule with 
And I try to answer all the comments. I really try, but recently, no way. I've been so behind. Um, anyway, thank you all. Thank you everybody for being there. Thanks for making this channel what it is. I do believe you guys are sort of like a family for me. And, uh, or to me, or whatever. We're all a big happy family. And, you know, we've had our ups and our downs, but families do have their fights and their struggles, and that's normal. But, uh, in the end, as long as we stick together, that's what's important. And I think that this channel has become a learning experience for everyone. Um, especially for me, and I hope for a lot of you guys as well. So... Forgive my rushing here, though. It looks like I'm rushing, but I am, because we are also, as I earlier said, we're going to be setting up the tree stands and scoping out the property for hunting. Please forgive me if you're not into hunting and, uh, you know, don't approve of that, but part of my path to self-sufficiency is going to be preparing my own food preserving my own food, which includes meat and fish. Oh, now you're going to see me cry for the first time on video. Oh, 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 oh boy. Remind me later, I'll tell you a little testimony about how I uh, hated onions my whole life. Oh, but um, a guy prayed for me. And uh, now I eat them, but my eyes still don't like them. All right, I'm going to shut off the camera because now I can't see a thing. And I've got to somehow uh, take care of everything in here. Oh, boy. So we've got the wood stove warmed up. I've got the crock pot or Dutch oven right here. It's my off-grid crock pot. And uh, we're going to pour in some water. Not too much, just enough so that that uh, doesn't dry out until the juices start flowing from the chicken. I've got fresh chili from the garden, fresh uh, oregano and sage. I'm not an expert, but it sounded good to me at the time. I'm going to throw this on top of the wood stove, and we're going to have a uh, off-grid tiny house Thanksgiving. Canadian style, anyway. We're on Canadian Day. And for dessert, we've got a really nice chocolate brownie cake with peanut butter. And we've got some cranberry juice to go with it. So I want to thank you very much for this awesome meal. And I'm sure we're going to enjoy it. So we've got the Dutch oven on the wood stove. we got the nice, glowing, slow fire. It blazes when I open it, but a little bit of glow in there. I've got the dials turned down. That one's closed all the way, and that one's closed almost all the way and I can hear the food starting to boil already in there so starting to cook maybe in an hour or so we'll have a really nice meal oh come here and smell huh. smell oh. no come here no it's amazing really smell come here yeah definitely I'll be back hold on a second I forgot something I'll be right back. <clears throat> It smells so good in here. He's gonna miss it. Oh, I got a glove right there. I'm grabbing paper or something to open it up. I don't have a hot pad right now. Oh, look at it cooking. Listen to it sizzle. Oh, I'm gonna add some salt and pepper in there. And then we're going out hiking into the forest and it's pitch black out right now. Almost, well it's dark in the forest. And we're gonna go set our tree stand. We're gonna try to find a spot. May I come in? Yes, you may come in. I want you to tell me, how does that smell in here? Well, well. That is dinner. What do you think? Glad to be here. Smell, what do you think? Mmm. Oh, good. You can hold that up for me. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. I'm going to put some salt in there. Look at that. Oh, maybe I need another salt container. All right, I'm gonna put the uh, camera down because I'm shaking it. So, would you like to show me what we got here? It's this hot, huh? Nice, and nice warm. hot I mean, cooking it's surface. Nice, I can't believe it. I'm physically here and I'm actually feeling. And we started this wood stove a couple hours ago, and I haven't put any more wood in since we started the fire. How amazing is that? Can I open it? Go ahead, please open it. 
Now I was just forking that meat a minute ago, just so you know. But look at that meal. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Hey, look at look all that's all the juices it's, it's, from the it's chicken. So centered and gentle and nice. tender. It looks very juicy. See tomorrow I'm gonna add some more vegetables and I'll add some rice in there. Mm. And I'll cook that back up. How Smells great is that, good. huh? Great, well. Nice. Well let's dig in. That's right. Let's go right ahead.